In DSM 7.2, Synology renamed the package that is used to manage Docker containers to Container Manager, providing it with additional functionality as well. What I'm personally finding is that Container Manager allows me to work on more complex container setups that, in the past, required either using the command line or a third-party application like Portainer. In this video, I'll go over the changes that you'll find in Container Manager, as well as go over the new features that hopefully help you better make use of the application. Before getting started, if you haven't already, make sure to install Container Manager from the Package Center. I'd also recommend installing the Text Editor package as well, which will allow you to edit files directly from within DSM instead of needing to SSH into the NAS. Now I'll launch Container Manager from the main menu, and like the old Docker package from DSM 7.1 and earlier, will initially come up to this overview window. Here, we do get more of an overview than in previous versions, where we'll see the current health status of the services we are running. And we'll need to mouse over or click on links to get further details on projects, containers, and images we have on the system. The overview section also now provides a network usage listing that wasn't available in previous versions. Next, I'll select Project which is a new option in Container Manager and, to me, the best feature that has been added. With projects, you can work on individual or multiple containers using a Docker Compose YAML file directly from within the graphical user interface, as opposed to using the command line as I've done in previous videos. As a walkthrough of setting up a project, I'm going to create one using my GitHub Synology Docker PyHole Unbound Repository which in the past would have required installing the Git server package and connecting to the NAS through SSH to run commands from a terminal session. Before creating the project, I'll set up the folder infrastructure that is needed, so I'll bring up FileStation to do this. I'll navigate to the Docker shared folder, then create a subfolder that I'll name the same as the repository. Within the folder, I'll create additional subfolders to match the configuration that is laid out in the Docker Compose YAML file from the repository. Next, I'll copy the contents of the .env file. Then I'll bring up the text editor application, create a new text file, and paste the contents of the .env file into the editor. I know I need to make some changes to the file's contents in my setup, so I'll do that now and save the file under the initial folder that was created, making sure to name the file correctly. Now I'm ready to create the project, so back in Container Manager, I'll click Create to bring up the Create Project Wizard. I'll give the project the name, set the path to the folder that was just created, then for source, I'll select the Create option. I'll then copy the contents of the Docker Compose YAML file from the repository and paste the contents into the on screen editor, then click Next. I won't change anything from this web portal settings window. Then I'll click Done to build and start the project. Once completed, I'll close this terminal window and we can see that the project has a status of running. I'll also bring up the PyHole admin graphical user interface to confirm that the project has launched successfully and it seems to be working fine. For further details on actions that you can take on a project, check out the project section of the Container Manager Knowledge Base article that I'll link to in the description below. Next, I'll click on Container and this section is pretty much the same as in older versions of DSM. There are some changes to the menus and the addition of the project column so you'll know if a container is associated with a project or if it's a standalone container. Under the Image section, Container Manager provides a few additional features. One of them is the Update Available option under the Tag column, which lets you know if a newer version of an image is available. If you click on one of the Update Available links, you'll be able to download the latest image 
and if the image is currently being used by a container, the container will be reset and restarted to make use of the newer image. This is great because in the past, you would need to use third-party applications like Watchtower or DIUN to get notified of newer images that are available. Another new feature that could come in handy is the Remove Unused Images option, which allows you to delete any images that isn't associated with a container. In past versions, you would either need to remove images one by one or use the command line to prune images that aren't in use. Creating containers from images is pretty much the same as in the past. You'll need to bring up the Registry section, then search for and download the image you would like to use. This will bring you back to the Image section where you'll need to wait until the image is downloaded. Then you can select the image and instead of a launch option to start the setup process, there is now a run option instead. I also found that the Create Container Wizard changed the order of where options and settings are displayed from previous versions, but you should be able to run through the wizard and find the things you normally would as you proceed through the various windows. For the Network and Log sections, the options under each are exactly what was available in past versions, so I won't cover those sections in this video. One additional item I would like to cover is that in past versions of the Docker package, under Details for a Container, you could find the container's local ports, which would be the host ports that you would use to access the container. In Container Manager, local ports aren't displayed anywhere in the graphical user interface if you didn't specify the local ports when setting up the container, as we can see in this open speed test container. If you did specify local ports during the setup of the container, you'll still see it displayed under details, like we can see for this Roncube mail container. If you need to figure out the local ports for containers that don't have the ports listed in the graphical user interface, the only way I was able to find those ports was to SSH into the NAS and issue the sudo docker ps command, which displays the local ports in the output. For example, ports 32774 and 32775 for the open speed test container we looked at earlier. Hopefully this run through of Container Manager was helpful to you and consider checking out some of my other videos listed here on screen. Also, if you would like to support my work or hire me to help with your implementation of Docker and Container Manager, check out the links either here on screen or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.